You're watching Democratically Speaking, Mark Lindy, your host, and I'm the chairman of the Democratic City Committee, and I am doing this show on my volunteer time, not on my Brockton community access time. I happen to have here in the studio a friend of mine, Ed Miller, who is a candidate for school committee in Ward 3. Ed, welcome. Thank you for having me on. Nice to see you, and in the interest of full disclosure, we serve together on the Brockton Library Board of Trustees. Yes. Okay. Um, Ed was the chairman. I'm chairman again. So, um, Ed, you've run before. You've been involved politically in the city for years. Yes. Why school committee? I know you live in Ward 3. You were in Ward 2. Yes. Why school committee? You know, right now, education is having problems. They need activists to be involved. And not only am I an activist, Mark, I'm a passionate activist. When I get involved, I'm a dog with the bone. And we need people who are going to fight for public education. There's a big push in the city and throughout the country of bringing in charter schools. I am not for that. You, you might find an under, underserving school system somewhere that you might want to change, but here in Brockton, we have one of the best school systems around. We were ranked 16th in uh, parent satisf satisfaction, which was in the Boston Globe. Mm -hmm. We were ranked fourth, I think, in US, uh, U.S. News and World Report, saying we're the fourth best urban school system. People come from other, t other cities, other states, to see how we run our school system, because we run one of the best. We have a 91 percent uh, on the graduation. 91 percent of the graduates went to higher education. You don't see that in other urban schools. So bringing in a charter school, which will take 10 million dollars minimum, because I think it's more. I think that's lower than they're just giving us a number. Out of the budget to give to a profit for-profit school is going to hurt Brockton, and they will not get a good edu education. Just one, one more point. Um, a study came out on charter schools. 31% were doing worse than they were doing as public schools. 29% was doing better. And then you had the middle that there was no change. So even studies are coming out saying there's no different, but we're spending more money on these charter schools. They picked the students. And the big thing with these charter schools is profit is number one. Not the teachers, not the students but just profit. And that's fine for a business. I work for a business. We're into profit. But when you're talking about school systems, when you're talking about fire, and you're talking about police force, it's not profit. It's getting the, the best for your buck. And that's public school system. And that's what I'm going to fight for. You don't have to convince me on that, Ed, because I'm a public school committee person. We have an admissions-based program at Southeastern. Yes. And we get people from nine communities, Brockton being the largest one, mm -hmm. And um, we do it with public money, and we're publicly accountable. Right. But you're not a for-profit nope, school. It goes right into... And I have nothing against private schools. You want to send your ch child to a private school? There are plenty of great ones. But that's what they're there. They're still non-profit. They're still... Everything goes to the student. No one's sitting up there, you know, on a $10 million, let's say, and taking $2 million for a bonus and then throw it into the school system. Another pro problem is they have such a high r turnover on teachers because... They're not paid well, they don't have good benefits, and they're overworked, and they leave quickly. And where do they go? They go to public schools. Looking at the Brockton school system, okay, you've been involved in Brockton for years. What do you have to bring to the table to the school committee? You have two opponents. Mm -hmm. It's a preliminary election. Two people will go on from the preliminary to the November election. What does Ed Miller have to bring to the table more so than your two challenges? You know... One thing is, as I said, I'm an activist. Not only uh, a little about myself, I'm on the uh, Board of Trustees at the Brockton Public Library. I'm the former chair and I'm a member of the Plymouth County Democratic League. I'm a member and the former first vice chair of the uh, Brockton City uh, Democratic uh, Committee. Every one of those, I was elected by the members to be some type of chairman. I bring leadership. I bring passion. And I, again, I bring like a dog with a bone. I get something on it. I don't give up. I will fight. My father once said, I reminded him of the guy on the Titanic who was hammering, fixing that boat until it sank. And I will not give up on anything. That's one thing that I, I, I think I... The, the other thing is, I research on who I vote for, who I support. Now, all three of us are against charter schools. The problem is one of my opponents um, will vote for people, voted for uh, our, um, 
our, our governor, uh, Governor Baker, because, and he is for charter schools. Now, when I'm on the board, the board has to fight the most powerful person in the state because he's for charter schools, he's going to fight for it. That's the problem. If you're for something, why are you voting for someone against something? Or if you're against something, why are you voting for something who, who's for it? You're going to be fighting them. They're not doing what's best for Brockton when you elected uh, Charlie Baker. You're not doing something, uh, Scott Brown, when he was senator. 100% in the pocket of charter schools. Those are the people we have to fight. So why are you supporting? That's why I think I'd be better because I also look at what other people support. I also support people who are going to support Brockton. And anybody who supports charter schools does not support Brockton. The governor you're talking about right now has cut the bonding and the funding for the Massasoit Science Building and the Downtown Education Collaborative. Okay. The education in Brockton is not just K to 12, it's K to 12 and then it's college. It's, exactly. it's, it's getting Brockton, finally it's due to be a UMass Brockton, even though it's UMass Boston he, coming he in. He also cut money out of the state budget on education. Mm -hmm. And then that's a big thing. Again, you're for public schools, but you vote for someone who's, who's going to cut your budget. We have to lay off 53 teachers. We have 32,000 students in this city, uh, K through 12. We're going to lose 53. Right now the ratio is about 25 to 1. That's going to change. We had to lay off people who helped the teachers. We had to lay off administrators. We had to lay off people in the cafeteria. We had to lay off people from all over. As much as the council is fighting, if you don't have the money, you're not going to be successful. And uh, um, the people who are paid well, people say, oh, teachers are paid too much. Come on, that is a crock. They work hard. They plan. They teach, unfortunately, 25 students who were like me when I was a student, so I give them all the credit. Um, but the, the thing is, you make a good living, you're happy. If you're happy, you're going to do well at your job and you're going to stay there. You pay them too low, they're going to leave. And then what are you stuck with? You're stuck with 35, 40 kids in the classroom who aren't learning. That I do not want for Brockton. Now, um the way the government is structured in Brockton, you have a school committee of seven ward members, you have a mayor who's chairman of the school committee, and you have a city council. Working with people over the year, at, at years, Ed, you know a lot of people. Mm -hmm. How do you think your experience would be a benefit to Brockton in terms of working relationships with city councilors and, and the mayor, whoever that may be? I will work with anyone the city elects. These are the people who are here to represent them. I may not agree with them everything, on everything, but I'm hoping that the people who are going to be elected are going to be 100% into the, uh, helping the school system. And I think they will. Even, the, even if I don't get along with them, I can work with anyone. Um, people know me. I, you know, I can get very passionate and I can rant on every, any, anything at a drop of that. But there's one good thing is I can work with everyone who's willing to just work a good job, do their best. That's the only, that's my Camp Rain promise. The only promise I can make is I'll do my best and I'll work my hardest. And I think there are other people out there. I'm hoping they get elected. Um, we may not agree on everything. We might have to work on a little here, a little there, but I think it can be done. And I think one of the reasons, as I brought up, I was elected uh, as chair of one group, vice chair of another group. Uh, it's because people know they can work with me and I'm willing to listen to everyone. Now, um, if, if you really think ab about things in, in terms of cuts, I, I know being a good Democrat, Ed, you're a union guy, okay? Yeah. You could find yourself as one of the seven members of the school committee on one of the union negotiation committees to deal with the teachers. You just stated about your feelings about whether they're paid too much or paid too little. How would you balance that? Being a strong union supporter and knowing what the resources are within the school department budget in terms of paying them. You know, one thing I've learned about working with union people, I am 100% union. Uh, I, I work for a very small company. You know, we have less than 20 people. We're not a union shop, but, but you know, we call the owner by the first name. But when you get to these large groups, like a school system or a corporation, you need the unions, first of all, 
because they're going to see things, the teachers, everybody else, who's right down to the custodians, are going to see what's going to be needed. One thing I've learned about union people is they're willing to work. They're not going to sit there and say, I want a million dollars and I want five weeks off uh, every five weeks. They're, they're always willing to take a little bit of a cut. I don't want to see anybody take a cut. But they're the ones who are always willing to sacrifice because they live in the area. And again, if we go to charter schools, we'll have no unions, we'll have no say. And go, go try to reach wherever this uh, company is. I think someone said it was out in Utah. When you have an issue, you're going to go to Utah and talk to the president of the company? You're not going to get to anybody. But union people, I, everyone I've met, are always willing to work. They're always willing to sit down because they want to succeed. And by succeeding, they want to be the best teacher they can. They want to be, the, if, whatever job they do, they want to be the best executive assistant they can be. That's what makes them proud. And they also want to make a livable wage. And there's nothing wrong with that. I think if there are issues and we do need to make some cuts, let's talk to the unions because they're going to see what really needs to be cut. I'm not going to see it, you know, as a uh, committee person. I need to talk to them. And, they'll, and I'll tell you, they'll probably make a little more deeper cuts than we would want to because they can see where the money's being wasted and where it's needed. Um, you're going out knocking on doors, talking to people. Mm -hmm. What are you hearing about schools and the in school committee race in particular? When you're going and knocking on the door and you say, hi, I'm Ed Miller, and, and, and talking about your candidacy, what are you hearing from the people? Uh, I mean... One of the big things is, and, and which is actually a good question because I wanted to talk about it because people are mentioning it, is where their kids are going to school because uh, for a while they were being bused. And that was an initiative back in the uh, 70s of uh, desegregation. The problem is Brockton is not a desegregated city. People live all over. We're, we're very small. So you're going to have as many of a certain race or a religion at one school you're going to have another. The other thing is we're having a big problem with transportation. That's unfunded. That has to come from the city. So the best thing is to let people go to school in the area that they live in. That's the biggest problem. I, I think that's going to change. Uh, actually, Kathy Smith, our superintendent, was talking about that and they're saying uh, they are going to allow more students to go to, their, go to the schools, if I understood her correctly, uh, are going to go to the schools where they live. And that's what parents want. That's, that's one of the biggest things. And the other one, keep charter schools out. They, like, they, they know we have a great school system. They know we have great teachers. And they know for years and years we've had a great... You talk to anybody from 25 to 85, and, the, and they lived in Brockton, they'll tell you how great the school systems were through all those years. So let's not change it. Let's improve it, but let's not change it. Mm -hmm. So things like middle school sports, that was one of the cuts. I know it's coming back. Mm -hmm. They found some funding to do it. How do you deal with the priorities of education as a member of a school committee? We, we had to deal with it with the library budget and yeah. what we could afford and what we couldn't afford. But like in a, in a school system, in a big school system, Barkton's one of the largest in the states. Well, I'm glad we were able to find money for uh, middle school sports. And they, even they cut elementary. Uh, soccer was one thing uh, that was cut. Soccer's a, you know, when I was young, it wasn't soccer. But, you know, back from the 80s, 90s, and, and early 2000s, soccer took off. We really need to keep that because that's, the people who are going to play sports in high school are going to learn to play it, um, if not just outside. They're going to learn to play it in the elementary school. They're going to learn to play it in the middle school. So we really have to keep it. The other thing is uh, they, want, uh, they want to cut our after-school programs. Those are the first thing. Actually, that and technology are the first thing. The two things we can't cut are the two things that are the easiest to cut. We can't cut after-school programs. Brockton is a middle-class city. Both parents work, and we have a lot of single parents, and, and they worry about their kids. These after-school programs are so important. They keep our uh, students busy. Look. I was, I was a teenager and I was young, and, and it's a rite of passage to get in trouble when you're a teenager. The, the after-school programs are what keep the students out of, out of trouble. And that's one complaint you hear, oh, these kids are hanging around and not doing anything. That's why we need these programs. And not just sports, but we need music, we need arts, poetry. We, because if someone's interested in something, they're going to participate. If, if someone doesn't like to play soccer, doesn't like to play baseball, and you make them play soccer and baseball, they're not going to like it. If someone likes music, if someone likes uh, uh, poetry, that's going to keep their interest. And 
keep their interest for hours while their parents are still at work till they get home. That's what the school system is about. I mentioned technology. It's another thing. Technology grows exponentially. It's, it's just so quick. And we ha we're cutting budgets for, the, for technology. This is what's going to make our kids go to college and, and get a good job in business so they can have a good job. Technology is everything. Now I'm looking at your sign. I see the students and teachers first. We've talked about that. We can talk about it some more. But you do something, and you've done it a couple of times in, in running. You have the word hire. You don't have elect, vote, reelect, whatever. Why? Because I feel as, a, as someone who's running for office, I'm not running to the, the, the do a job for myself. I am being hired. When, when everybody elects me, that means they're hiring me to be their public servant, to be listening to them and giving them the best uh, education their, their children can get. Look, when I apply for a job, they hire me. I do the best. And if I do the best, I'm rewarded. Uh, if I don't do a good job, I'm fired. And that's how we have to treat our politicians nowadays. You know, we, it's like there's some awesome about them. No, they're not. They're, 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 you know, for a school committee, there's really no money behind it. But when you're talking about other people, it's like when you're talking even your state rep or U.S. rep, come on, you got a great cushy job there. Appreciate it. And listen to when I talk to you, not just to the guy who can donate a PAC money for you for, you know, a million dollars where you know where it's coming from until they tell you. We have to bring it back into, you're working for me, and when they hire me, I am working for Ward 3. I'm also working for all of Brockton, because what I do on the uh, committee is also going to affect Ward 1, 2, 7, and the rest. you got north-south zone is probably what you're talking about, yeah. because it's not just any more award thing, mm -hmm. it, it, but it's, there's no at-large. Right. Back in the day, they used to be at-large, and everyone was from the west side in one corner of the city, yeah. so they diversified it. Now, um, th thinking, down, thinking down the road, um, do you have any unique ideas or any uh, formulas or anything special that y you would bring to the table, you, Ed Miller, versus you have two other candidates? Uh, I think the best thing I can bring is, 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 well, one of the things I love to do is research. I read. I look at uh, what's happening in all around the area, and I think that's one of my, my business, business, uh, biggest assets is I'm willing, I look at what school systems are failing, why they're failing, and, and people who know me, I love to research, and you get people who just repeat what they hear on the traditional media, which is probably wrong, and I will research, and I think that will bring to the table because when you put something in front of me, I will rip it apart, I will study it, I will look through it, and I will ask a thousand questions. And again, looking at other areas, I can see where they're failing. If other states and other districts in other states are failing because they did X or they did Y, and then someone brings up, well, let's do this, let's do Y, let's do X, I go, every time they do it, it fails. And there's four words I never want to hear people say, and unfortunately I hear it all the time. It can't happen here. Well, I bet there are plenty of people who are in, and other people who, who are sending their kids to other states and saying, what the hell is going on? I don't want to talk about it, but there's one thing that I found amazing. Kansas, the whole state, when school got out, had to let them go uh, a month early because they cut the budget so much they didn't have enough money. And now they can't even get enough teachers. And that's going to affect their students. That will not happen here with me. I will fight tooth and nail to make sure that. I think what sets me above my, my other opponents, and I mentioned it before because I'm passionate and I'm an activist, and I, as much as they're nice people and I think they'll do a good job, I will do a great job. And I am passionate and I will not give up. And I think that's what sets me apart from my two uh, opponents. Relationship with the superintendent. We have... Back a few years ago, there was uh, not the best relationship between the then superintendent of schools and the school committee. Now there's Kathleen Smith, who is the current superintendent. Um, I think she's up for renewal for her contract. How do you see the relationship in terms of with the school committee and the superintendent and her administrative team? Well, I don't know the superintendent well. I do know her, and we talk a lot. And Of course, when I run into her, talk, we talk about education and sports. Uh, the thing is, I think she's doing a great job. I think she has the pulse 
of the school system and what this school systems need and i will love to work with kathy smith because she's just so dynamic and what she does she's worked in the city for thirty nine years i think it was and i think the initiative she wants to do uh... i think will has always improved the uh, school system. Everybody talks about Common Core, and, and, and actually, people get a uh, Common Core and Park uh, mixed up sometimes. You hear a lot of people against Common Core today. Well, the problem is Common Core has been around five years. I have a little issue with it. Sometimes I think it's a little over testing, but I'll tell you. When you listen to Kathy, she said when they adopted uh, Common Core here in 2010, when it when it became an initiative through the state, it increased the amount of students who went to college. That's something people don't know. You have to look at it, and things have to be changed. Park, the problem is, and, I th and as I said, I think people get Park and uh, Common Core confused because they listen to the traditional media, and that's something for 30 seconds, and they say what they, re don't wanna, what they wanna say, not give the facts. Park was actually taking a, a, a testing that may replace MCAS. The, the thing is, um, it was taken out of the educators hands to design it and given it to for-profit uh, companies you know I have no, again nothing against for-profit companies but I want to test and we do need you know we do need some standardized testing we have to make sure with the United States of America we have to make sure Brockton is getting a great education as much as anyone else uh, and that's where we need to keep it together um, when they took it out of the uh, educators hands the people who teach and gave it to people who don't teach and just want to make a profit, it, it became an issue where I won't support. I want educators to make up the testing. I want the teachers who work in the classroom, who see the students to come up with the testing. I want people like Kathy Smith and other superintendents just like her to come up with the testing. They'll come up with great testing. Corporations just going to come up with something where they can make money and not care. Do you think there's too much testing? I know you tried to get an initiative going in the schools with civic education. Yeah. There's a lot of effort and time put into time and learning that has to do with the testing. Some of the elective courses go by the wayside. Yeah. I, I was lucky enough to go to school when there wasn't the testing. Mm -hmm. I hated standardized testing. I didn't do really well at it, yeah. except for advanced placement U.S. history. That was my specialty, yeah. and I had the best teachers that taught me history. But I had a lot of time. I could hang out in the TV studio. I, I, I made a mis one mistake that I didn't take my Spanish lesson seriously enough, so I'm not bilingual. But do you think there's too much testing? Do you think there's too much of a focus on it? Yes, and that's one of my problems at Common uh, Core is there is too much testing in it, but it's, it should be easy to cut back. Um, I, I don't want students to regurgitate what they learn and then forget about it. I want them to learn and then that's what regular the testing that we used to get in school will keep it going and then you find out where you need to improve uh, but we do need uh, you brought up uh, uh, the AV we do need that we do need the music because that makes well-rounded students standardized testing and I, I didn't do well at standardized testing if they looked at my standardized testing compared to my grades I would never would have went to college some people just don't do well but when they if you're using standardized testing to get in college, that's, I can't agree with that. When they, but when they use a well-rounded student, what they get in their grades, uh, uh, what they have learned, um, and, and extracurricular activities show a well-rounded student, and that's what colleges at one time wanted. I'm hoping they still want that today. Now, um, have we told the Ed Miller story enough? Do, 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 is there anything you want to tell? I know you very well. But the voters that are out there that are looking at the three choices, what does Ed Miller have to bring to the table? What, what, your background leading you to want to seek public office? I want to be in public office because I want to be hired. I want to be working for my community. And when I get involved and I volunteer and everything, it's to make things better for my neighbors. And being on the school committee, I can make things better so my people who live around me, doesn't matter where they're from, doesn't matter when they got here, doesn't matter if they were here when they named it Brockton or North Bridgewater, doesn't matter if they came yesterday. Almost every parent wants their kids to get a good education. They want their kids to go to college. I will be there to fight for them. 
unfortunately, I work behind the scenes a lot. And again, I, I brought up because once I join a group, a lot of times I get elected to the leadership. Once people get to know me, unfortunately, I didn't grow up here in Brockton. Um, I, I've seen people who were voted for because someone went to high school with them 25 years ago. But you know, when you're electing someone, the office, I look at economics. How are they going to help me economically? Even school committee, it's not, well, it's not going to be helping them. How can they help my kids economically? Because they need the education. Without a good education, you're not going to go to higher education. You're not going to go further. Um, and, and that's why uh, I'm running. And, and that's why I'm asking people. That's why I'm asking everybody. Uh, you don't know me, but you can research me. Believe me, I've, I've written op-eds for the Boston Globe South. I've written uh, op-eds, and you can find it online. Nothing I'm saying right now isn't what I said five years ago or ten years ago. And a lot of times people get elected um, and say, oh, I'm against this because maybe 80% of the people, and as I brought up, uh, one of my opponents, he is, uh, he says he's for uh, or against um, uh, for-profit schools, and I believe him, but he, then he elects people who are for that, and those are the people you're going to have to fight. That's called research, finding out why you're going to elect someone, not just because they have a D or an R after their name, because they're going to come in and do the best and help you economically, they're going to help your kids economically, they're going to help your kids be educated and become better. And that's what it got. My grandfather, three years old off the boat at the turn of the last century, he didn't go to high school. His kids went to high school. My uncle uh, Sanford was the first one to go to college. My sister was the first one to get a master's, and we have a PhD coming up. I, 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 She's going for a master's, but she's so bright, I know she'll have a PhD. And that's why we need good education from the beginning. And that's what America is to me, coming in and just fighting and doing better. Um, they used to make fun of my great-grandmother because from the minute she got here to the end, she couldn't speak English, but my grandmother could speak it well. My mother can speak it well, and I can speak it as well as I can. Um, and that's family. Do two minutes. Tell the voter why Ed Miller, and, and give your website and phone number in two minutes. Well, I only have Facebook. It's uh, elect. Um, it's higher. Uh, Elliot Ed Miller, uh, Ward Three Committee. You can find me there. Um, and and I put on why I'm writing. You, you're not you're not going to go to something I did and say, well, why is he running? It's there. Um, the best thing is because is I'm going to fight for the Ward 3 Brockton. I'm going to fight for you that your kids have a great education, that your kids have the, have the ability. I mean, we can only offer it, but if your kids are willing to fight for a good education and go to school and have a great and good education, and, that keeps, and also that keeps crime down. You talk to the real estate people in the city, I know a few, they use Brockton. The, the sell homes because people want that's the one of the main things they look at they want a great education that you put me on the board and your, your kids are going to at least have a chance of getting a great education I will fight for them till my dying breath thank you Ed thank you Mark thank we'll you for you having me passionate we'll follow the campaign and we'll follow you around thank you okay. you're watching democratically speaking Mark Linda your host stay tuned for more candidates running for city council city council at large school committee and mayor but most importantly make sure you get educated about the candidates and you go out and do your duty and vote on September 22nd thanks for watching